Me and Ruger have spent the last eight months in Colorado. The leaves have begun to change and the nights have begun dropping into the 20s again, which is our sign to leave the Rocky Mountains and head to warmer weather. We decided to head west towards the deserts and red dirt of southern Utah. And the goal as always is to take as few paved roads as possible and explore the back roads and off-road trails that connect our country. I put together a 247 mile route that'll take us from Crested Butte, Colorado to Moab, Utah. The route consists of 197 miles of back roads and trails with only about a 50 mile stretch of paved highway. And after researching the route, I know there's gonna be sections where the ambulance may simply be too large to make it. But we won't know that until we get out there and give it a try. Now I'm not sharing this expedition with you as a true hardcore expedition, at least I don't consider it to be. I just want to share with you what life in the ambulance is actually like. I'm a nomad and I'm simply headed west back to California to pick up a barn full of tools. I have no set timeline, no direct route, and I plan as I go. This is my day to day and what I've been doing for years. It's full time overlanding and I'm not on a vacation, although I can see how it may seem that way. When I say this trip will take two weeks, it's because this is normal life. I move slow and stay in my camping spots for a few days at a time. If I move too fast, then I can never seem to get anything done. And too much moving means there's too much time dedicated to driving, finding campsites, leveling out, and setting up. Staying stationary for a minimum of three to four days is the only way that I've found to get around this. It's quiet out here, and sometimes I don't see people for days. It's peaceful and it allows me to concentrate without many of the distractions that are common in normal life. I edit videos, answer emails, run video calls, and work on some other projects that for now are top secret. <laughs> then I live my life, take my dog on walks, go on dirt bike rides, and do chores. When I'm in town, I stop at a bar, stop at a coffee shop. Honestly, it's just a normal life within a seemingly unnormal one. The first 33 miles of this route is Kebler Pass, which is known as the premier destination to see the fall colors in Colorado. It's home to one of Colorado's largest aspen groves and is filled with dispersed camping sites and side trails along the way. It's a seasonal pass that connects Crested Butte to Paonia. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that right. There's nothing tough about Kebler Pass. It's 33 miles long and it's a well-kept gravel road and any car could get through it. And it's the only option that keeps us on our goal of staying on dirt roads and trails. But Kebler is still a worthwhile drive. After a two hour drive, Kebler will dump you into Paonia State Park, which will start the main stretch of paved road for our 247 mile journey. And soon we come into the small mining town of Somerset, where the Elk Creek Mine had employed over 200 people before a collapse and underground fire had shut down the mine in 2012. And it will most likely become just another Colorado ghost town in the coming years. And the next stop is Delta, where it's time to get prepped for the next stretch of this trail. Believe it or not, Delta is actually the largest town I've been in since I left the Colorado Tiny House Fest back in Denver, and that was about four months ago. But it still only has a population of 9,200 people. It's one of two opportunities for a resupply along this route. Alrighty, next stop, groceries and fuel.
right at the Confluence Park to see if we can get any free water before uh, heading out on our trip. Really hoping we get something. So we are using iOverlander for this spot. And iOverlander said that it is most likely shut off, but we're just gonna see anyway. So the spigot should be over here. I'm gonna go check it out. All right, it's definitely working. So we're gonna go ahead and move the truck and fill up on some water. There's a lot of people watching right now, so. It's always fun to steal water from the park when people are watching. Okay, the water fill up is done. So that was nice. Got topped off. Got topped off in water right there. Pretty close to topped off. Okay, now that we're stocked up, I think it's time to actually get out there and get on the trail. So the next stop that we have after this is in about 70 miles or so. I believe it's just going to be mainly dirt roads, no actual trail. Actually, I lied. There's a section that I mapped out that is a trail just to make sure we got some variety. But yeah, we're not going to see another town for a little bit. Um, I might even take two weeks just on this one section. So yeah, let's do this. So I found this pup on the side of the road. In fact, he jumped in front of my truck so fast I almost ran him over. I looked around and we were a couple miles away from any homes. He had stickers stuck to his fur and there was obvious signs of fleas. In a situation like this, I really want to make sure that this dog isn't just a farm dog. But after looking at him a little closer, it seemed to me like he had been out here for a while. With no collar and no obvious tags, I decided to put him in the truck and see what I could do to find his owners. If he had any, that is. So I decided I would only drive another couple miles down the road and see if I could find a place to camp. The plan was to call animal control in the morning and see what I could do for this guy. So that night I started figuring out exactly what I was going to do with this pup. And I don't have much footage once I got to camp, so I'm going to go ahead and just show you my Instagram story. I think that's honestly the best way to tell you this story. Just started my 180 mile all dirt journey that's going to take us from Colorado to Utah. And I already picked up a hitchhiker. So this little guy just came running up to my truck. We're probably 
five, ten miles away from any other homes. And he's uh, he's got some stickers on him. His ears haven't been cleaned. There's a little bit of maddenness, but he's super young. He's a puppy. Hey, let's get a look at you. Come here, come here, come here, sweet thing. She's hungry. I'm gonna go get her some food. All this dog wanted to do was just eat more and more food. It was obvious that she was hungry and she wanted even more water than she did food. And by the end of the night, the dog was completely out. I made her sleep on the couch because she did have fleas and, well, she was pretty dirty, even though she might not look like it. I was excited to go take her out in the morning and really get to know this dog. But unfortunately, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> so last night was, um, it's not a fun night last night. Um, dog needed to go pee, um, like 11 o'clock or so. I let her out to go pee. And then, you know, she wanted to come right back in. And then at around two o'clock or so, she needs to go pee again. She started whining. And so I let her out. Um, she started to go pee. And then you know, I stayed in the ambulance. I'm so used to having a dog that just sticks around. Um, but I come back out and she's just gone. Um, I looked everywhere, I took the flashlight out and canvassed the camp, I took the dirt bike out and rode around in the middle of the night, and we're parked right now on the side of just this massive, massive cliff, and all I could think about last night is that the dog just fell off this cliff. <sighs> yeah, you heard me right. I didn't have my eye on the dog for about a minute and a half, and just like that, she was gone. It was completely my fault, and all I could think about that night was, did I just let a little puppy die? But I wasn't going to be able to do anything about it till the morning. I had already canvassed the area on my dirt bike that night, and I couldn't get down to the cliff till morning. To be honest with you guys, I really didn't even want to share this story. But I feel like I should be authentic and tell you the actual journey and stuff that happens. I don't think that I can make it clear enough just how much this wrecked me that night. This one was tough and I felt completely responsible. So in the next part of this journey from Crested Butte to Moab, Utah, we'll be looking for this pop, including getting to the bottom of this 600 the foot cliff. It's right up there. We're on the second shelf right now.